Ever since the dawn of video games, players have been on the hunt for glitches which allow them to break those games in some very hilarious ways. This is no different in the Mario series as ever since the original on the NES, these glitches have been used to either break the game, cause something weird to happen, or aid you along your adventure. My name is Copycat, and in today's video we're going to be looking at the best glitches in every Mario game. Just as a note, I can't go through every single glitch so I'm at least going to pick my favorite few from each game. Also, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to stay notified when I upload new videos. Super Mario Bros. for the NES has a few very useful glitches that are all more geared towards helping you greatly if you're trying to speedrun this game. The first one I'm going to talk about is the flagpole glitch, which only saves you a minimal amount of time, but in a fully optimized speedrun, every millisecond counts. The idea is that you can clip through the bottom block of the flagpole, allowing you to skip the lowering animation, effectively ending the level a bit sooner. However, this glitch is extremely hard to pull off, and the setup for it requires you to be extremely precise. I tried for quite a while to get my own footage of me performing it for this video, but failed as you don't only have to be pixel perfect, but sub-pixel perfect, making things much more difficult. Instead, here's world record holder Cosmic performing the glitch in level 1-1. As you can see, when he lands just before the flagpole block, he's quickly pressing left, and then quickly pressing A, which is another key in doing this properly. Another glitch that speedrunners use is the pipe clip in World 1-2 that allows them to get to the warp area much faster. This is almost as hard as the flagpole glitch, and after a long time of frustrated tries, I only ever did it once off camera and couldn't duplicate it. So once again, here's Cosmic. As you can see, he actually clips through by quickly letting go of both B and A, then pressing left and just tapping A to get through. The one glitch I could perform however is the infinite lives exploit, which is actually something that shows up in almost every Mario game. This can be performed at the end of World 3-1 by using a Koopa shell and continuously bonking off it to rack up the 1-ups. This may take a bit of practice to get used to, but it's nowhere as difficult as the other two. Super Mario Bros. 2 has a few interesting glitches that you can use to your benefit. One of these is the ability to gain an infinite amount of coins. Now, this is more of an exploit, as the idea is to place the subspace entrance near a cliff that has patches of grass where you can collect coins. If you enter this subspace, collect all the coins, then die in the subspace, you can actually do this an unlimited amount of times as you gain the coins towards your total, but they don't reset on your play around. Of course, this burns through your life total, but it's still very interesting. A really cool audio glitch can be performed with the help of a star, and the subspace area, to have the original Super Mario Bros. music play. Carry the potion door with you while collecting all the cherries to trigger the star. Grab it and enter the subspace, and stay in there until both the star and the subspace run out. If you did it correctly, then the original Super Mario Bros. music will play for the rest of the level, or until you enter a jar or go through a door. The final glitch in this game I'm going to show you is one that's really useful in speedrunning. This is called the Climb Above the Screen glitch which is done in World 7-2 and allows you to skip the majority of the final level. This is done by using the Fast Climb glitch on this very specific chain in the level by simultaneously pressing up and down on the controller at the same time. Now this can't be done on the original NES or SNES controllers as you have to press up and down at the same time which means you need a joystick and a D-pad. Now I tried this for a long time on the Switch to get this to work for me and I couldn't do it, but look how fast Cool Kid does it in his world record run. Good start. Super Mario Bros. 3 really only has two useful glitches and one of them completely breaks the game. This one is the Credits Warp glitch that takes place in World 7-1, where you can actually clip through a pipe allowing you to enter it in the wrong direction, triggering the arbitrary code execution that allows you to load the very end of the game. The setup for this is extremely complex, but the idea is that you can manipulate the game's memory and write your own bit code for the processor to run. This requires you to manipulate where the enemies spawn in this level by pulling off some very specific maneuvers, killing certain enemies, and grabbing Koopa shells in exact places to ensure you can use their sprite positions to write your needed code. 
To be honest, this is way too complex for my normal brain to comprehend, so I definitely recommend watching Retro Game Mechanics Explains video titled Super Mario Bros. 3 Wrong Warp. The final, much easier glitch in this game involves becoming invincible. In the English version of the game, you need to use a Tanuki suit and grab a Spiny, then get inside of a Karibo shoe where you'll be invincible for a few seconds until that Spiny wakes up. In the Japanese version of the game, all you have to do is turn into statue form while entering the shoe, and you'll become invincible until you have to go through a pipe where you need to use another power-up as you can't actually access it. It's weird how there's actually different glitches for different versions of the game, meaning that they're not actually a direct port. The first handheld game in the series is Super Mario Land for the Game Boy, which has a ton of glitches as Nintendo was very limited by the technology of the time. One of these is the Ganchan coin glitch, where you have to stand in a very specific spot in your battle against the hi Yoi hoi boss, and instead of taking damage, you'll gain coins. I have no idea why this specifically works, but then again, I'm not complaining. In World 1-3, you can actually get out of bounds above the stage, where you can literally bypass the boss and trigger the end switch. It's hard to tell if this was intentional or not, as it almost seems too easy. My favorite glitch, however, involves breaking the scroll in the last level. This is done by placing Mario behind the wall and waiting for the scroll to push him off screen. This doesn't actually kill him and forces him back on screen to the right just like Pac-Man. Super Mario World also has a credits warp similar to the one in Super Mario Bros. 3, but this time you can perform it in the very first level. Once again, by defeating certain enemies and placing objects in certain spots, you can write code in the game that can be exploited to cause the warp to the credits. This breaking of the game occurs when you collect a coin with Yoshi's tongue during the same frame you jump off him and collect the coin with Mario. This triggers the arbitrary code execution, and if you did it properly, then you can beat this game in 41 seconds just like Brazilian speedrunner Furious did. I'm obviously explaining this in really, 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 really simple terms, so if you want a way more in-depth explanation of why this actually works, then check out Dots Are Cool's two videos, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. This game also has an exploit where you can gain an infinite amount of points, a lot of 1-ups, and a massive amount of coins. What you have to do is grab the Cape Flower power-up and head to the Forest of Illusion 1, finding the part of the level that has the three Wigglers close to each other. Here, jump between the Wigglers, using the floating ability of the Cape to make sure they go back to their calm state each time. This will allow you to rack up some insane numbers until the values of what you're gaining actually start to just glitch out. Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels has two very useful glitches helping you beat this very difficult game. The first one takes place in World 9-3, where you can actually jump on the very top of the stage and completely bypass the Bowser boss. In the Super Mario All-Stars version, if you jump over the flag then it will cause your screen to start to wig out, which is kind of weird because this doesn't happen in the regular version of the game. This game also has an infinite life exploit that's done in World 1-1. To do this, trap the Koopa shell on the last brick before the two unbreakable blocks and destroy the blocks directly above you. Next, time your jump perfectly so Mario starts to rack up the points giving you an infinite amount of 1-ups that become really useful in this incredibly difficult to beat game. Just like the original on the Game Boy, Super Mario Land 2 is full of glitches but there are just a few that will help you through your playthrough. One of these is the flip screen glitch, where you can actually use the broken screen's mechanics, which for some reason are attached horizontally and vertically, meaning that if you shoot a fireball to the left side of the screen, then run right, it will sometimes come out the other side. This only has a few practical uses, but otherwise it's just pretty fun. One of the most useful glitches in this game is the pipe glitch, which will let you clip through the floor of most levels. The easiest place to do this is on the very first stage of the game, where all you have to do is grab a Koopa shell and enter the pipe on the exact same frame the shell hits Mario. When you re-enter the stage, Mario will fall right through the floor, towards the end of the level. Now, this glitch is huge for the 80% speedrun of this game, as it actually allows you to reach the credits a lot earlier. To pull this off, you have to do this glitch in the first stage of Macro Zone by using the Ant's Rock this time to damage Mario while going down the pipe. From here, go to the first stage of Pumpkin Zone, where you'll begin to fall right through the floor towards an area what speedrunners call Glitch World. This weird area is actually the game's RAM, or memory, that you can actually move through. If you get all the way to the bottom of this specific area and break a few blocks, you can actually corrupt the game's memory so the next time you load up a level, it will get confused and transport you to the next viable address, which just so happens to be the ending of the game. 
That's how speedrunners like Odir complete this game in only 2 minutes and 42 seconds. Whoa. Super Mario 64 has a ton of glitches, but none of them are more useful than the ones used in the world record any percent speedruns. There's a few extremely advanced techniques here that I tried to explain in a previous video, but if you really want to know in depth why and how these glitches work, then I suggest you check out Summoning Salt's video on the world record progression, Super Mario 64 any percent, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. A much easier to follow glitch involves getting on top of Peach's castle and talking to Yoshi without gaining the usually required 120 stars. To do this, you need to land the third part of the triple jump on the sloped wall to the right of Peach's castle. Here you can quickly jump off the slope, and if you did it just right then Mario will be able to grab the roof of the castle. The three glitches I'm going to show you in Super Mario Sunshine all allow you to access levels or gain shine sprites a lot earlier than intended. The first and easiest of these is the Beach Cannon Secret Skip that allows you to get inside of it much quicker. All you have to do is use the Flood's hover ability at the right time and get inside of the cannon as soon as he's about to close the hatch. The second glitch is a bit harder, and that's the Gelato Beach Shine Skip. To get this, you need to grab a coconut and get on top of the roof of the hut where it's located. Next, using the post, align yourself perfectly so you have no camera issues, then place the coconut down on the roof, and start to run into it with Mario, which should eventually clip you right through once it starts to roll down. From here, all you have to do is use the Flood's Hover ability to get inside the area where the Shine Sprite is located. The last skip is incredibly hard, and is a technique used by speedrunners to gain entrance to the Yoshi Secret Shine in Pinna Park much earlier. What you have to do is grab Yoshi, making sure that the two smeeches are following you. Next, toss a papaya near the entrance of the park, then use the platform Yoshi creates from transforming one of the smeeches to clip through the wall skipping the cutscene. In this area, turn the other smeech into a platform, then quickly eat up the papaya to turn Yoshi orange, which is needed to access the merry-go-round. From here, ride that platform all the way there. Now unfortunately I no longer own this game and haven't been able to acquire it due to the ongoing situation, so this footage is from Japanese speedrunner Tubao. New Super Mario Bros from the Nintendo DS doesn't have any crazy speedrunning exploits, but it does have some really cool glitches that will allow you to do some really interesting things. The first is the Mega Mushroom Storage Glitch, which allows you to do exactly that. What you have to do is collect the Mega Mushroom underneath a few unbreakable blocks and try to touch those blocks at the same time which will allow you to collect it and put it in your item storage. You can now use this power up wherever you please. In challenge mode, you can create small spaces on the left hand corner of the screen which will actually allow you to jump up them and go off screen. This is because challenge mode doesn't let you scroll backwards allowing you to create these spaces on the screen. This works best in World 2-5, as you can use the block hopper to clip through the floor to the flag above. The final and best glitch in this game occurs in World 4-6, after you use Dory to reach the platform near the pipes. Wait on this exact spot until the timer reaches 140, then you'll be able to walk on invisible platforms where you won't fall into the poison below. I have no idea why this works at all, but if you go too far to the right, then your game will glitch up and you'll get stuck. Super Mario Galaxy is one of the biggest games in the series, full of a few glitches that will help you out in your playthrough. One of these is the slope exploit that will allow you to travel up a slope that would usually cause Mario to slide down. To start this face away from the slope, then jump and spin, holding your control stick so you're going up it. When you land, jump again, but this time go away from the slope so it tricks the game allowing you to spin. You can continuously do this and get to some very interesting areas you're not supposed to. The next glitch is actually a developer mistake and takes place in Bubble Breeze Galaxy. All you have to do is get to this grassy platform where the star is in sight and set up Mario on the edge closest to the screen. Next perform a backflip towards the rocks and Mario will land on an invisible platform that the developers clearly forgot to remove. From here you just have to long jump and grab the star. The final glitch slash exploit I'm going to show you guys will allow you to skip the entire mansion portion of the ghostly galaxy. What you have to do is get on top of the bone to the left of the entrance by long jumping towards it, then spin while kicking off the side, ending up on top. Next, long jump towards the wall of the mansion and spin right before you touch it so you can wall kick off it and land just beside the launch star. 
Be careful as the camera tends to freak out here a bit, so this may take a few tries. New Super Mario Bros. Wii has three glitches that all have something to do with infinity. The first is that you can infinitely flutter with Yoshi if you continuously mount and dismount him from underneath a solid block. This is just a fun visual glitch, and is absolutely pointless. The Infinite Coins glitch is a lot more useful and requires you to be Ice Mario when entering the World 4 castle. On this spinning cube gate, wait for the Koopa to come around, then jump, hit him with your Ice Ball, then grab the gate again and quickly spin to the other side. If you did it correctly, then the Koopa will continuously spit out an endless amount of coins that just look straight up weird. Finally, you can once again pull off an infinite lives exploit in World 2-3 by hopping on the Koopa continuously until you have the maximum amount. This one looks incredibly familiar. My absolute favorite glitch in this video takes place in Super Mario Galaxy 2, and that's the hilarious Yoshi slide glitch. To do this, you obviously need to be riding Yoshi, then crouch in place. Next, quickly release the Z or Z button, and shake the Wii remote just a split second after. If you did it correctly, then you'll be glitched in this weird sliding state, allowing you to travel across mud or water as if it was just ground. In the Starshine Beach Galaxy, you can actually break the game and walk underwater with Yoshi. To do this, bring him to the point in the water just before his swimming animation would kick in. Here, dismount from Yoshi, then spin while looking at him to get back on. If you did it just right, then Yoshi can now walk underwater, and Mario won't have an air meter as the game thinks he's still on land. Finally, by far the most useful glitch in this game is the Infinite Flutter exploit with Yoshi, which allows you to skip a large portion of several levels. The timing here is a little tricky to figure out, but the idea is to flutter in air with Yoshi by pressing A, then tapping Z or Z to enter a crouch animation. Here, quickly let go of A, then hold it down again, and repeat this process literally as long as you can. This is really just a tap of the crouch button, as if you hold it for too long, Mario will just flip off. Trust me though, this technique will take some time to master, but when you get it down, you'll be able to skip major portions of levels and explore some out-of-bounds areas that you're definitely not supposed to be. Super Mario 3D Land is a very different type of Mario game, and with it is some very different glitches. First is that you can actually perform a backwards long jump by gaining max speed, then jumping, and quickly pressing the control stick towards the opposite direction. Next, as soon as you land, long jump towards the direction that you're facing, and you'll actually go backwards. If you string this together with perfect timing, it does look a bit weird, but unfortunately there isn't much use for this as it won't let you go any faster and it won't clip you through walls. Another useful glitch takes place in Special World 4-1, where you can stand on the edge of an elevator platform closest to the screen and the usual enemies that would appear and attack don't spawn for some reason. There must be a trigger in the middle of the platform that doesn't get tripped, so instead nothing happens until you reach the piranha plants. Finally, this game does have a 1-up exploit that can be easily done in World 1-2 by using the wall and the Koopa shell. This one is really extremely easy. There are a lot of glitches in New Super Mario Bros. 2, but there are two that will help you gain infinite coins and infinite lives. The infinite coin glitch can be done in World 3-4 with the help of a Koopa Shell and a Gold Flower power-up. First, you need to place the Koopa Shell next to the vine, then activate your Gold Flower. Next, ever so slightly go on the vine and kick the shell into the unbreakable block. If you did it properly, then every time the shell hits Gold Mario, you'll collect a ton of coins and this can literally be done until you collect the maximum amount. Now, if you don't have the Gold Flower power-up, that's okay because you can still do this exploit and instead you'll just gain lives, which is pretty neat. New Super Mario Bros. U probably has the least glitches out of any game you'll see in this video, but you can still perform an infinite lives exploit. You can do this in Acorn Plains 1, where you need to bring the purple Yoshi to the small gap between the pipe and the wall. Next, all you have to do is bring a shell to that gap, and by this point every Nintendo fan must know how this exploit works, as I'm pretty sure they're just adding it to this game as a sort of troll or easter egg. Super Mario 3D World is the sequel to the 3DS version, but has a much bigger and much more polished feel, although that doesn't mean it's devoid of glitches. The best involves using the ice patches in Snowball Park, where you can mash the crouch button and you'll start to pick up some insane momentum. This can also be done with the Tanuki Power-Up, or Propeller Box, to travel some absolutely insane distances. 
If you mash the crouch button but face diagonally into this corner, then the game will begin to slow down as if it can't keep up with the amount of momentum you're building. I've heard that in this state you can really glitch your game up and go flying off screen, but I wasn't able to get that to happen. Also, you guessed it, this game has a 1-up exploit. Now, I've already made two videos about glitches in Super Mario Odyssey, so I'll just show you my favorite from this game. That's the Seaside Kingdom Out of Bounds glitch, which is a very important technique used in any percent speedruns to quickly gain two moons. To set this up, bring a cheap cheap to the very edge of the map in the water, releasing it and ensuring it's ever so slightly clipping through the ocean floor. Next, start to swim away from the cheap cheap and throw Cappy back towards it. If you did it just right, you'll be able to swim downwards through the level, and then you can clip through a wall that you're not supposed to get into yet. Like I said, I've already made two Super Mario Odyssey glitch videos, so I'll leave a link to them in the description below. Alright, so that's going to be it for today's video guys, I really hope you did enjoy this one. If you did, please leave a like, comment below if you have any ideas for me to make future videos, and of course subscribe to my channel while hitting that bell button. Also, I do have an Instagram account at CopycatGamer, where I upload some really cool clips and some items from my collection that you won't see on this channel. Hope you guys all have a good day, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!